This is just a, a quick video just to show um, some of the established uh, planting and raised beds on my allotment plot which I've been uh, given a month to, to leave so what I'm doing is hoping to move as much of the organic matter, compost, mulches, timber, raised beds, bathtub, wormeries, worm beds, we've got bale arm crates full of pure kind of worm casting, paving slabs, concrete paviors, so it's basically like a an instant garden and I think this really could be almost like an instant community garden so I'd really think this could uh, really benefit the students at Hornsey School and um, really enhance the sustainability and the, the overall um, carbon footprint carbon footprint of the school by kind of harvesting as uh, much of the kind of green waste in that the school produces and then putting that back into grow beds to, to build soil to encourage soil life to sequester carbon, even uh, looking into things like um, making biochar from timber waste and sawdust waste from the DT workshops. But uh, what I've got here, these are some seed and trays, and uh, these are just um, what's called a lasagna bed. So I'm composting in, in situ. And look at this, this material was just added there last week, and there's a great big pile of worms there. Um, lots of um, fungal activity, lots of microbial activity, and you can see what the worms are doing here because there's some residual heat in that material even though it's only about eight inches deep or 200 millimeters deep so those worms are around the edge and those worms will be up in the uh, the compost in the substrate in these planters as well so what i'm doing here um these are sedums so these are pretty much fairly um just purely ornamental but what i'm doing in other parts of the allotment and excuse me because i've <laughs> just been emptying a compost bin so i'm rather out of breath but I've been um, growing um, crimson clovers and uh, um, green manures actually as a cover crop which can be harvested but can also be transplanted and when you move those containers the, there'll be a certain amount of root pruning and the nitrogenous fixing nodes actually on the roots of the clovers will fix nitrogen into the soil as well and then you'll get a sort of um, symbiotic relationship between the plants and the, the microbes so the plant roots the plants will photosynthesize produce um, sugars which will feed the fungi, the fungi will be eaten by the worms and then you get this whole little ecosystem of, of composters and detritivores working away under the soil. But what I've noticed is, I mean this just goes to show that's just a week old and that material is so so damp and you've got so much um, fungal activity in there and you've also got that element of worm activity as well so the plants are benefiting because the compost is is holding moisture. I mean look the growth on this is, is amazing, look this is uh, pretty much can be harvested every week if you want to make green roots you can kind of harvest that and plant it so yeah I mean even that small bed itself uh, um, 200 uh, maybe 150 litres of compost part composted material but perfect to go into worm beds and you can grow your you kind of green manure crops on top so um, just trying to think there's a, a three three metres by one metre and then there's another four and a half meters by one meter of those, just those planters alone. These are pallet, raised pallet collars, so these are instant raised beds, and for a, a couple of students, I mean, if, if each student could have a little raised bed like that, I think that'd be terrific. They could plant their crops in there, um, raise it up, grow things like carrots, beetroot, or um, larger crops like um, uh, courgette and um, sort of squashes, summer squashes, and. Uh, pumpkins even in a bed like that if you've got enough organic matter but this is just an example of um, biochar as well so this is actually sequestering carbon straight straight in the soil and that's that's a really terrific um, habitat for microbial life it actually latches onto the sort of cell structure in the in the wood itself so it makes a huge surface area so also holds a huge amount of moisture so 20 percent of that in the soil is really really good it really helps the fertility of the soil and you can just see by the plants they'll be healthy and uh, you, you'll, you'll barely need to water even during droughts. So I've got, I don't know how many of those I've got, I think these are too deep because this is raised up. This is all um, old Christmas trees that I collected locally. So I mean if you were growing in a, um, using this as a mulch on a bed, I mean this was perfect for that hold in moisture and then next year that's next year's kind of compost, that's next year's organic matter that's going to be worked in and then all the pine needles have all broken down, they're all composted, so yeah, that's just superb. Or if you've got a path, if you want to suppress weeds, if you've got perennial weeds in there, and things like um, sort of cooch grass and bindweed, that will completely suppress that. So that's 
yeah, I mean, ton, tons of that. So ideally, if I can get some helpers uh, and uh, someone to drive a van, that would be amazing. I think this could be such a good opportunity. And you can see I've got reclaimed uh, school welded up um, table frames there, MDP um, pipe. So that's like an instant kind of fruit cage. So there's uh, one, two, three, uh, five of those. Two of these four foot or slightly over four foot cloches. Got polythene to go on those. I've got an oak frame that's all been made up. This has got ventilators on it as well. So you've got controllable ventilation and then you've got agri mesh on the, the end panels. So you can either have mesh panels for ventilation or you can leave it completely open for pollinators. The 1930s uh, cafe bench there with a repurposed Iroko top. So yeah, lovely bench, really comfortable. Six foot long, students can chill out, plan what they want to do in the garden, do some gardening. Really enjoy the space, really have a sense of community as well, I think. I think that's really important with a, with a school garden, make that school garden the, the kind of heart of the community that would be so beneficial. If you've got retired people with no garden access, they could show off their skills that they've take, taken a lifetime time to pick up. And this is uh, one of my worm beds, and look at this, this is, this is pretty much pure, pure worm castings. I think uh, Charles Darwin wrote a thesis on the uh, um, sort of life cycle of worms and how the, it's basically worms that keep us alive and they're just cycling that organic matter, all that carbon and nitrogen is going straight back into the ecosystem, into the food cycle and there's some worms still in there as well. These are around about 300 millimetres deep, I mean you can buy that stuff but I'd, I'd hate to think we pay for a, a kilo of this, I mean this is, this is that's like black gold, that's I mean, if you've got this in, in your soil, then you're laughing in terms of growing it just easy. Because your plants are thriving, they're not subject to so much disease. You don't have to use um, pesticides. I'd never use pesticides, but look, there's a biochar in there as well. So it's activated through the, the organic matter in there, breaking down all the worms and fungi. So I've got cow. I don't know how many plants I could actually transplant even. It's pretty amazing. There's courgette plants, but I mean, they've just been watered a couple of times and they're massive. I've got cabbage over here, it's a, like a perennial cabbage, and then pumpkins, you can see the pumpkins down here. But um, again, there's more of these worm beds underneath these here. These are eight foot long worm beds, two feet wide, about a foot deep. So that can all be dug out. That's, that's just incredible compost. Another worm bed here, scaffold board, raised beds. I've got a repurposed um, oak floorboard. Uh, this was originally raised beds, but it's a hot bed at the moment. And I've got just, the, again, I've got the plants on top just to hold in the moisture in there. And you can see that's breaking down really well. It's already really quite dark. And you can see there's already fungi in there. It's just been squashed by the, by the container, but you've got the fruiting bodies coming up there. This here is um, repurposed from a, a blue HDPE um, 45 gallon barrel. Uh, the sort of composting cone and uh, I've got designs for a, a continuous flow through wormery and um, what I'm trying to do there I'm, I haven't actually installed this but I'm um, vertical planting and uh, rainwater harvesting on there as well so this is a sort of raised bed this is compost area but I wanted to make it a little bit more attractive so I've made a, a vertical planter sort of green wall here this is mainly sedums I've got mixed um, succulents on top and some alpine plants and these are actually growing, they've got water reservoirs here, so when it rains, the rainwater is actually harvested in here, so it captures the rainwater, and then it wicks rainwater back up into the plants, so the plants are really thriving. And because you've got irrigation there with the reservoir, then the, the plants can grow vertically as well, so that's wicking up moisture into those. These have only been planted a, a couple of weeks, but already you can see they're really filling in really, really nicely. And the idea with that is that you can kind of conceal vertical um, structures like water butts, um, intermediate bulk containers for storing rainwater, um, obviously compost bins like I've done here and then on top moving over I've got ryegrass growing in trays here, I've got crimson clover, I've got alfalfa and I've only just started sort of doing this but I think this is a, a really productive use of um, the actual area on the compost bin itself as well and you can see this is clover and it fixes nitrogen through uh, nodes and the roots as well. And the concept there was as you, as you move these to, to, to access the, the compost underneath, some of that root 
um, growth will break off and that nitrogen will be fixed into that soil. And then because the clover is perennial, you'll be able to transfer that and then those plants will continue growing elsewhere. So rather than growing green manures purely from from seed and germinating those every year, you can kind of, if you're off to a head start, you can just basically transplant those. And this is the alfalfa down here. Uh, got creams of the clover, white clover, another hot compost bin there, uh, another compost bin there as well. I mean, they're four foot square, about three foot six tall, so really quite big compost bins. So a bin that size would be plenty of compost for a couple of the eight foot by four foot beds. So moving back to the first bed here, the bed with the, the green netting on it is eight foot by four foot. The next bed is eight foot by four foot and the third bed there's eight foot by four foot and then there's two beds running along that way as well. So it's basically five eight foot by four foot beds and that's the same as the initial wee bed I set up at, at Hornsey School. So moving over to this area here, this is uh, more um, of what I call a, a lasagna bed. So this has only been down a, a few weeks, this material. But again, because I'm growing green cover crops, you can just see the amount of soil life in the in a part broken down material. So next year, this would be absolutely fantastic to grow as a bed. So much soil life and in terms of um, cross-curricular kind of activities and just, just observing what, what soil life you've got in terms of species of centipedes, rove beetles, you've got wood lice in there, various worms. Um, you can actually sort of study how the worms um, work with the other kind of earthworms. So you've got anisic worms and uh, endogeic worms as well. So you've got the lobworms and then the compost worms. So yeah, I mean, this, this is so deep I and mean, this is raised up a good foot. So. Ideally, if I could get a couple of volunteers from the school, use of a minibus with a couple of rows of seats taken out so we can put a tarp in there. I can get a, a lot of the material bagged up, but there's not enough hours in the day to, to, to move it all. But um, I just, every kind of bag is, is five, ten pounds worth of, worth of organic matter, so it would really, really just transform that, that school garden. And as a community garden, it would really, really get a kick started, I think. It'd be fantastic. This was about three years of um, composting and bringing in about 250 kilos of, of brewer's waste and um, 250 kilos of wood chip every week over uh, about three years. So it's it's no serious, uh, <laughs> no mean feat of what I've kind of achieved here in those, those that time. You can see here, I haven't actually worked around on this, this bed here, but that's a good foot lower down. And um, there's just a few plants I've got going in here. Some hercaras, which was there, um, just really nice. I love that, that, that limey greeny foliage. Um, that's quite good. It's terrific for pollinators. I've got some salvias in there as well. Potatoes. Um, I've had so many potatoes from growing those in these um, these potato sacks. Uh, they've been really, really successful. And then I've got more clovers and uh, I've got more wormeries down here. So these are the almost like the sort of domestic size can of worms type wormeries. I don't know what's going on here, but yeah, you can just see there's some um, windfall apples in there. I won't delve into it because there's just so many worms and just compost ready to go. More worm beds here. I've got these potting benches, which are just really plain from the school desk. Capillary trays, which would be perfect in the greenhouse. Um, these are just um, repurposed uh, little mini kegs, and I've just got some mixed succulents growing in there. But I think things like this, the school fairs, school fates, workshops could run, run these propagating um, plants and succulents and the students could get involved and they could sell those and actually finance the school garden and, and make a kind of small income to actually keep itself sufficient, self-sustaining as well. There's so much the students can benefit from in terms of planning, planning what crops they're going to grow, crop rotation obviously getting plants in the ground and germinating have sequential kind of crops as well. And this is, um, uh, I think it's a Mexican hat plant, but that's a succulent and just so much fun to propagate. And succulents are brilliant because if students want to get involved in gardening and they don't necessarily want to grow the produce, they could just be growing things like this and I think they could get so much sense of achievement and almost a, a sense of ownership as well. And uh, know that that school garden belongs to them and it's through their hard work and their commitment that's made it a success. You obviously you need a few key staff members that are interested that can keep things ticking over. You need people that can do regular sort of 
supplemental watering, but um, just moving down here. More of those pallet collars. These are two pallet collars high, instant raised bed, 200 millimeters deep, loads of compost, compost ready to go. Just trying to think um, how many uh, classes or students could be involved. A couple of students, each one of these beds would be fantastic, and I think that would be so, so much benefit to, to students' education and to their overall kind of uh, life in the school. And um, possibilities of making the school into a community garden, their involvement in setting up initially could have massive knock-on if, in effect, effects and huge positives for the, for the surrounding community for, for, for years to come. I think it would be such a nice thing for them to be involved in. So more pallet collars here. This is raised up about 18 inches. This composted, part composted on top. There's Hugel culture in there. There's organic matter down here. And you can see, yeah, this is, this is pretty good. You could grow it straight in there. That's brilliant. Perfect. Yeah, so just think if you go in one of the hardware stores and you, you're buying compost and it's, I don't know, a tiny little 60 litre bag they, these are like 50 kilo sacks you could just fill up just keep filling them up and just uh, just transform that garden overnight compost bins got about 20 of these um, black plastic these are the um, what I call them Dalek compost bins and I'll just uh, move them across So again, this is um, more of the sedum trays. Got a six foot by four foot um, greenhouse ready to go there. There's the uh, foundation for it. It's all tempered glazing as well, so it's all uh, safety glass. So you can see four and a half meters by one meter. More of the compost bins here. These are lovely. I mean, this is uh, one of my sole feeding stations here. Plants are doing so well, no additional watering no additional feeding they're just thriving and that is because you've got that ecosystem there with the with the worm cast and the worms working in that organic matter plants will root down into there that that organic matter is actually holding moisture as well and that's wicking back up into there got repurposed oak um, greenhouse shelving there that was all made up it's got all stainless steel screws so that lasts uh, last for decades um, there's a hot compost bin here Um, aero bin, quite good fun, about £150 to buy, I'll pick that up locally for about £20, so school's welcome to all that, like, I mean if, if the school can have a couple of volunteers come down here and maybe every every other weekend or something for, for, for the, until the end of the year, I think we could make such a difference. That's a 8 foot by 4 foot compost bin there, made out of scaffold boards, all stainless steel screws, brand new tarp on there as well. Concrete mixing trays, which are good for kind of sifting uh, worm casts and compost. I've got um, bird netting on there for when you're doing seedlings. I've got some of these uh, cold frames. I've actually got a, another um, four foot square. I think it's made by Access Garden Products. That's an aluminium um, cold frame. They're about 500 pounds to buy new. That was really, really nice. I use that as a top bed. That's all tempered safety glass. Got a small shed here, all made out of oak. Um, oak frontage, the sides are reclaimed um, softwood, but that's all um, featherboard. This is Iroco Old Science Laboratory benches. And um, I've got these soil feeding stations in here ready for a green roof. And there's a beautiful rubber liner in there as well. So that's really good fun. Such a nice height to work at in the garden. Had um, squash plants in here. I use that as a sort of a nursery bed, but that's an old um, sort of Victorian uh, galvanised uh, cold water tank or what uh, I don't know probably 50s or 60s but um yeah riveted really heavy gauge uh, steel so that's got um wicking containers in there as well I just had some mint growing in there and obviously the the squash which are planted into the beds now but they they started off in there and didn't need any watering grow towers here that's a project so it's uh, for growing vertically which is really going to be exciting I think really maximise the use of space. So even though your Fawnsey school's got a got a massive area, then you can really benefit from growing vertically as well. I've got about four or five of those containers, so I can run that as a workshop as with the students as well. Um, I'll just have a little quick walk around. There's so much I've missed, but I mean, um, it's hard to see and it's hard to get an idea of the size and the scale. But um, yeah, I mean, there could be an endless supply of, of compost just to transform. 
pretty much to do three years worth of composting in the space of uh, three months which would be amazing and I think that would make that grow grow beds down at the school really really productive and uh, I just think it would be, be fantastic a fantastic opportunity a bit of graft in in, in the meantime and um, just to, to transfer as much as, as possible I'm actually uh, lower down than the, the neighboring plot there I'm actually looking down on it even though I'm further down the hill so it just goes to show this is raised up about two feet two feet of um, a couple of years worth of Christmas trees from all the streets around here all been brought in composted hugel culture got a bench there benches pallets to go under the compost uh, bins to make them rodent proof big heavy duty um, plastic toolboxes to store class sets of materials tools propagators cloches all the kind of equipment um, a little stove there if you wanted to make cups of coffee outside that's been terrific um, yeah more of these benches and propagating plants on here a couple of trays there trolleys for flower pots that needs a bit of organizing but that would be really good to, to get this get a really nice sort of um, working setup at the school and then I've got these just beautiful succulents which I think would just just be a really joyous thing to, to grow and just the diversity of color and the, the te contrasting foliage and textures so rewarding so yeah that's it um, some of this I've moved from another plot so the bags of potatoes they were just growing in raised beds I transplanted those straight into the to the sacks just so I could move those but um, the compost in there it, it's it's pretty pretty nice stuff and most of that was taken out from from worm beds itself so you can see fewer casts in there and there's some timber as well some woodier stuff which is great because it holds in moisture but keep the plants going but this is this is just superb stuff really really nice and there's so many sacks of that those sacks there's a whole area there which is basically just um, compost ready to, to be moved I'm trying to kind of struggling trying to think um, where where to start in terms of moving it there's a a trampoline for another bathtub wormery I've got another bathtub there I've got another table so there could be uh, four four baths to make um, the bathtub wormeries and each one holds around 220 kilos of worm casts and that's already full up and the worm cast here is ready to go so you can see that and I said it's about a foot deep and that is that is amazing stuff it's basically the start of all the kind of life on earth is coming from that organic matter breaking down and being recycled into the soil food web to make new plants to make new insects to make new um, food for, for birds which are in turn are predated and then by mammals and obviously overall of us but it comes down to that that initial six inches of topsoil so yeah there's so much the students could learn and i think they could really enjoy it and have a really fantastic space as well and space that they could be proud of and if this could be opened up to as a community garden then they can actually use that as a sort of um, showcase for what they've they've learned at the school and what they've made what they've created and once you get students enthused about something once you can get them to teach adults I think your, your job as an educator is, is, is pretty much there and I think with with students and the the resources that are available to nowadays and information technology and, and cross-curricular um, aspects and automated greenhouses and laser cutters for cutting out ventilators and greenhouses and things and uh, I mean I've prototyped the, the automated compost heated grow house which would be absolutely an, an amazing project and that can use raspberry pies or arduinos or bbc micro bits I tried one with a bbc micro bit using a maker code just using the code blocks then you can set your um, sensors to pick up the soil um, moisture and then automatically run pumps or misters or open up um, solenoid um, valves from gravity fed irrigation systems or drip feed irrigators got all these um, these are from trampolines these make a terrific uh, support for a cloche they're, rust, they're rusted but they'll last for, for years and then I've got some of the frames as well for making instant sort of hoop houses and cloches and uh, fruit cages so the, the allotment is from here so this is just a, a little bridge over a 
drainage trench because I had to put all the French drains in to get this to drain. Um, it's right up to the uh, to the grapevine there, and then that big tree in the corner. It's right under the corner there. The green shed there is the neighbour's shed, and then the trellis there is the uh, the apiary. But um, I'm just sort of thinking long term, it would be fantastic to have bees on the school site or even beehives on the flat roofs of the school. It would be superb. There's so many local beekeepers as well and um, sort of beekeeping groups and um, it would be quite easy to get in touch with a beekeeper and find someone that's worked with schools and use some of the, um, the schemes for beekeeping in schools itself. But um, looking... Uh, uh, further afield as the garden becomes more established I think um, Scorpio could be looking into the green flag award for sort of sustainability and I've got plans for in vessel composters um, I've got most of the materials for those but it's just the needs to be welded up but if I've got a got a use of the school site to actually demonstrate this then you can actually um, compost hot compost um, school kitchen waste in the in vessel composter and that would be such a great thing to get involved with I had a, th a word with the chap um, who kind of was responsible for designing the um, the ride in in vessel composter, so I think it'd be nice to uh, to maybe get him down to the school. And also the the chap who um, set up the campaign, the um, London National Park City. I have been in touch with him in terms of um, looking at secondary schools with with successful um, school gardens and. Unfortunately, although there are schemes for it, they are very seldom. Um, I think it's seen as more of a primary activity, which is such a shame. And I think as, as students are in secondary schools, as they're subject to more and more stress and more, more pressure for exam results, and sort of literally after coming through the lockdown, I, I don't know how that's affected students' education, but I think if they can be involved in, in setting up a, a green space that they're partly um, responsible for the the development and design of that, I think that could be, be such a superb opportunity and I really wish I had something like that when I was at school myself. But these are, um, these, the white container you can see here, this is um, reclaimed HDPE 25 litre containers and the, the green wall is all made out of those reclaimed containers. The black ones have got carbon black so they are um, UV stable, so they'll last for years outside. And they're food grade as well, so you haven't got to worry about them uh, kind of off-gassing uh, plasticides and things like that. So yeah, fantastic. Um, plunge tank there for watering cans, and then I've got water, when water butts, rainwater butts, um, all sorts of staging for growing plants and terracing plants and displaying plants. I've got a lovely, lovely Japanese maple there. Yeah, so, <laughs> as I said, it's it's a lot of work, but um, I think, yeah, if, if there's a few, a couple of volunteers for a, a few weekends with a couple of spades, wheelbarrows, I'll get the stove on, get some coffees and teas going, and ideally, if there's a use of the, the mini bus, and we can maybe, maybe put some sort of a tarp down in there, get as much of the compost bagged up, move it over, get, get this plot cleared, and then find some time to just... Uh, reinstall it and uh, spread all the, the mulches down to the school garden and, and move the raised beds and then it's yeah it's pretty much an instant instant garden slightly longer than i wanted to but um i think there's a lot of information it's hard to get it all into a video i mean there's years of work years of development but yeah it could be such a good space well it, it really is already a good space it just uh, needs to be down at the school i think it needs to be around uh, like-minded individuals and and I think the students will be receptive to bringing on there and looking into these ideas and looking at sustainability and and in a way it's um, considering some of the, 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 the problems that are affecting the planet on, on a smaller scale but just making students more aware teaching them about soil loss and how you can kind of grow sustainably a friend who keeps chickens as well I just think that would be incredible if you could have a secure area and, 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 and chickens and then you're feeding all the weeds back to the chickens and getting chicken manure in turns for you getting the, the fresh eggs and also the enjoyment of caring and looking after animals and being around nature. Thank you. Let's make it happen.